Jaffa, congratulations, you're League Two champions. Obviously, it's a ridiculous set of circumstances that's led to this point. But just can you sort of sum up the emotions of for yourself and for sort of on behalf of the team as well? All in all, it's probably mixed emotions. I think when we started out at the start of the season, we wanted to get promoted. That was our main goal. Did we want to do it this way? Absolutely not. We we felt, and and people can throw out, you know, you've you've won it by default, or you've, we haven't. We we deserve it. And um, we had seven of the bottom nine to play. Um, we played the mo- all our most difficult games. If we would, if we get the same results from the last ten games as we did against the teams previous, we would have got twenty eight points out of thirty. So I think we deserve it. I think Crew and Plymouth also deserve it. I feel a little bit for Exeter because. They've been up and around it all season. But um, listen, we didn't want it to happen. We wanted to go through that pressure of, of having to win that last game to gain promotion, pressure of that last game to to win the league and obviously cele- celebrating it together as a group and celebrating with our supporters. So we've missed out on that. But I think it's just the best scenario. I mean, when we when we initially broke up, when we was on the way up to the Oldham game, we was all like, right, it'll only be two weeks. We want to get back playing. We want to get back playing. And then slowly but surely, four or five weeks, six weeks later, you're like, can we go back now? And you slowly lose that enthusiasm to go back. So I think the, the attention then turned to getting promoted, winning the league this year, and then let's get a date now for, for next season. We can start planning. But all in all, it's been a fantastic season for the club. I think everybody off the pitch, including the chairman downwards, everyone behind the scenes at the, at the ground um, through to the office staff and myself and, and, and the coaching staff and then obviously the players who, who have been absolutely tremendous this year and then fully deserved the promotion and we spoke about it at the very start didn't we Ben where if these supporters come together we can we can achieve something special um, and a big turning point with me was that Stevenage game where the supporters then really got on board with, us, with the players and, and something special has happened do you think that this season the turning point was really that sort of relationship with the fans and that closeness that the fans feel to the players and the club? Is that sort of one of the things that you look back on and say, no matter how we won the division, that happened either way and that was through hard work and sort of through a relationship building, basically? Yeah, I think yeah, the, I spoke about it when I first came in and it was difficult when you first come in because you've got a group of players that you're not really... You, you, you want to work with them and you want to improve them, but in the back of your mind, you, you, you've got certain signings that may come in, in in at the start of last season and really improve you. And I always wanted to get that relationship back with the supporters because I knew that could take us a long way. And it's easy coming out and saying it. Everybody comes out and says it. But actually doing it is a different thing. So um, I, I really believe that that Stevenage game was a massive turning point for us. And then some of the performances in the next six or seven weeks after that was absolutely you know, outstanding. It got the trust of the supporters. And then even the games where we wasn't so great, we had a four or five home games where it was really windy and we just ground out results and the supporters stuck with us because the players and, and the staff had, had got that trust, trust from the supporters and then, and then it all just bonded together and, and we, we've had a fantastic season. Yeah, I sort of want to go back right to the very start of this season and sort of at this when we sort of came back for the first day of pre-season, your sort of recruitment was massively important and you sort of said in the in sort of February, March, the previous season that you didn't necessarily want to break up that squad. How much at the time did you see that sort of turnover of players that we saw last season as a, a sort of a risk, basically, that it could go one of two ways that they do or don't gel, basically? Well, I'd never seen it as a risk. and I'd never seen it as a risk. One thing that I can do is I can make a team play good football. So we'll go through certain patterns of play and we'll go through a lot of things. I can, I can make better, better players better at passing the ball, better at movement. I can make the, make the pitch big. What I couldn't do is affect people in the final third, in the box where bits of magic and, and players can finish. We didn't have that last season. We was, we was a really good team up until the 18-yard box. I think this year with Doyle, with Anderson, with Yates, um, with uh, DJ, I think them play is Grove. They've really affected Kane Mullery. They've really affected the, the team at the top end of the pitch. And as a coach, you can't really coach that. You have to trust players to take chances. You can advise them on where to move and what positions to be in. But then they've got to take the chances. And this year, that's been the biggest difference from last year. The, the amount of times we've got the ball in the box in good areas and then the, the, the good players at the top end of the pitch have taken the chances. 
And um, when was the first sort of? I mean, we had a relatively positive start to the season in terms of. I think we all went unbeaten in the league in August, pretty much. Had won our first two games. When was the first sort of inkling of sort of we can or probably even should sort of go up this season? The goal was start of pre-season, but when we when we kicked off the season, we we thought it was a little a couple of bodies too short. Scunthorpe away in the opening day showed a lot of good signs, but I think the thing where it really clicked together, we just got Grant, we just got Doyle. Late and Orient away to go in and really demolish him in, in the first half and go in at 3 0. I think that was a, you know, that point where you look at each of them and go, if we keep injury free and we carry on playing that type of football, then it'll take a really good team to stop us. And, and in Crewe and in Plymouth, two good teams, I have to say, extra as well. He, he would have pushed us all away. And I'm gutted for myself that I've missed out on that, that pressure and that the moments you have to go through to become a better manager. And our players, would have had to go through to come closer as a group. I mean, important moments in games what get you through to, to win the league. We've missed out on that, but I have to say that in the circumstances, we, we still deserve it. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Orient now. I mean, I think for many fans, that was sort of that first half, especially, was just an archetypal Swindon performance from this season. But there was also games where you had I think, Macclesfield and Morecambe, where we really did play a lot of teams off the park, but mainly because of the weather in the second half of that sort of period before Christmas, we really had to sort of grind out results as well. Did you sort of, were you pleased with, you sort of knew that you had good players and you played good football, but was that really where the test of this team came in was when conditions were really quite poor, it was windy a lot, like an immeasurable amount of time this season from what I can sort of recall. Did you sort of feel that that was one of the main sort of, sort of tests for your team was when it, the conditions weren't great, when the opposition weren't great, when the pitch wasn't great? Was that where your team really showed another level to them? That definitely, because I think if you're going to win the league, then no disrespect to Macclesfield and Morkin, who are going to be down, you need to be winning them games at home. Um, last year, last season, we needed to be at 90% plus to win the game. This year, we've shown different aspects of the game. We've, we've scored a lot of goals through passing good football. We've scored goals through hitting Kane Woolery on diags and, and getting second balls and getting up the pitch quickly while the pitch is expansive. Um, so we've shown a lot of ways to win a game. And I think that, that people, I mean, I have to say, Stephen Bender was outstanding. Every time that Matthew Baldry has taken the pitch, he, he's averaged up 2.2 points a game. He's been, for me, the best centre-back in the league when, he, when he's been fit. When, when Zeki Fryer has moved to centre-back, outstanding. You know, Dion Donoghue at left-back, Rob Hunt and Paul Caddis, really good defensive organisation about us. And, and obviously, we talk about attacking players and we want to be you know, open and play good football and create chances and score goals. But the back line has, has, been, has been very good as well. And, and they've won, of, won us a lot of games. So it's been a whole squad effort. Um, but yeah, it's really good when you can go away at certain clubs and, and win ugly. And then obviously sometimes at the county ground, it can be windy. I remember one team actually blaming us for turning a wind tunnel on, um, which they weren't happy about. But we played crew, we were a good team, Exit, we were a good team in the wind and we, and we managed to get over the line which is again a good characteristic to have yeah, I mean we have to talk about him in that period before Christmas Owen Doyle's unbelie that sort of unbelievable run of goals he'd tell you that it was all about the service that he got and I think to an extent he's right but you talk about finishing chances there was that period with Doyle where every single week you were just being asked about him and that was it how tired of that were you and also sort of how long did you expect it to go on, I suppose? No, no, you don't get tired of, it, of talking about a striker that scores goals. Um, but it's just about getting Owen in the, in the right areas of the pitch. You don't want him coming short too much. You want him to play on the outside of the shoulders of centre-backs. And I know, because I've worked with him before, that he's moving in the box. And when he gets chances, irrespective of what level it is, once he gets a chance, he's very good. He's very, he's very ruthless in his finishing. So it's nothing that we didn't expect from him. Um, but again, I have to take a massive credit to the players around him because they kept creating chances, keep getting the ball in the areas that, that Owen thrives on. I mean, some of his finishes were very good, but some of his finishes, he was put on a plate as well for him. So again, if, if the team isn't working behind Owen, then he doesn't get the goals. And if the team is working and Owen, Owen doesn't take his chances, then we don't get the credit as well. So it all just worked in tandem. And, and frankly, to get 25 goals in... I think it was about 30 league games or something. No, it's a frightening stat. So 
I'm just glad that he didn't get to finish it off, and, and he had a chance of getting 40 goals, which would have been would have been brilliant. But um, you know, he's got the job done, and, and, and we've been promoted. And again, it's all about the team. So we're happy for Owen, and we're happy for the rest of the players. And in that time, sort of coming up to Christmas, sort of January felt like a really, I mean, it, it was an important month in the end, but it felt like January was a little bit make and break in terms of there was this narrative around Owen Doyle going back to Bradford, Jerry potentially being recalled by Rotherham. At the time, we were sort of batting off questions in press conferences week in, week out, and it was because they were scoring every week that that was happening. And then you also had that coupled with the fact that January was basically our toughest set of games throughout the whole season. Was there an understanding that it was a little bit make and break in January and sort of, or was there always a confidence sort of in that, in the team, basically? I don't think there was a worry, but there was always, you always had it in the back of the mind, but if we lose these two players, we don't get them back, then they're going to be difficult to replace. Um, in hindsight, and the way the league went, and it finished with, with us 10 games left, that January month was, was huge. Um, we actually went into the start of January thinking that if we can be still in the top three in, at the end of January, then we knew that our running was, was quite kind on paper. So um, we wasn't worried, but the fact that every time Owen Doyle didn't play centre-forward, Jerry H scored and was, was a big bonus. And then when we lost Jerry, we, we had an, an idea that Paul Warner promised me that he would come back. So we was quite relaxed about that. But um, I know what you're thinking, and listen, it grated on me every time I got asked, oh, you're not going to be as good without Owen Doyle and Jerry Yates. Well, you're not top of the league for three, four months of the season because you just, you've got, you have actually got good players you know, in the rest of your team. So I knew we'd, be, we'd still be competitive, but it, obviously if you take 40 goals out of your team, then it can make things more difficult. But we're glad that we've gone on back and obviously with the added goals that Hope brought, Hope, Hallam Hope scored a couple of important goals for us. So um, we managed to get the job done. Yeah, I mean, looking to that sort of final week of January, Yates is returning, Doyle's deal is sort of hanging in the balance. Sort of after a, after a week of sort of stress, late nights, and sort of Colchester away midweek, sort of three hour round trip, well, six hour round trip. But sort of how good was it to get that sort of, it sort of felt like it culminated in just this absolute hive of atmosphere at the county ground on, on the Saturday against Exeter? Sort of what are your memories of that week as a whole and sort of that sort of happy memory at the end of it? Um, I remember actually coming, we played away at Colchester and we actually played well. We should have been a two or three up and we, and we didn't take our chances and Colchester changed the way that they played in the last 20 minutes and we played the prize for that. Um, and my first thought after the game was not too much towards the players because it'd been great. We'd, we'd suffered a bad defeat, but it was about a Saturday coming up and I was straight on the phone to the chairman. What's happened with Doyle? Can we get him done? Can we get Yates done for this weekend? We knew that Yates had come on uh, for Rotherham, so he couldn't go anywhere else, which is a big plus for us. Um, and then it was just about getting them to back and planning for Exeter, which was probably one of the biggest games of the season. And I think it just, it was a bit of frustration, a bit of all the supporters and everybody else on the outside saying, you know, you haven't got Doyle, you haven't got Yates, you're going to slip up now, you're going to do this. And it was as if all our supporters and us, our club as a whole came together and let our frustration, frustration out by saying, we've got Yates back, we've got Doyle back, we've got 13,500 at the county ground, we're going to beat Exeter, what are you going to say now, how are you going to stop us? So, yeah, it was a, it was a, a you know, accumulation, a load of things, and it was a brilliant day for us. That was, a, that was when I first come out and I seen the support, that's when I thought, you know what, this club could go again in League One, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, after those fixtures and after Exeter, after beating Crew, after beating Plymouth in that in January, almost all of our toughest, with ver commas, fixtures were out of the way. Was it really a case of maintaining maintaining focus more than anything else in that sort of February and March period where you? Surprised? say lesser opposition, they're, they're all difficult games, but was it really about the focus and the concentration and the attitude of the players? I think that's been our, our danger all year. Our only danger really when we get a little bit too complacent. But even in the, even in the games that we lost around that period, Colchester to the way, we was outstanding for 65 minutes, just got a bit complacent at the wrong time. Port Vale away, we was, we was outstanding. We got beat 2-0. Sometimes in football you can play well and lose. Um, the other game was North, uh, sorry, Newport away. We got beat. Difficult circumstances in a tough conditions against a team that, you know, 
really thrive in them conditions. I don't think we would have beat them even on a good day for us in, in them conditions. So it just gives you belief that every time we get beat, we're still playing well. When you get beat and you've got no light at the end of the tunnel, and you're not making chances, that's when you start to worry. Whenever we had a bad defeat, we always bounced back with a, with a good performance a week later and, and got a result. And then my thinking was, listen, if we got the Easter weekend out of the way, we, I think we played Cheltenham on Easter weekend, then our running from them would have been Mork and Macclesfield, Leighton Orient, older teams that wasn't really playing for much. And, and early on in the season, we, we dismantled them teams quite easily. So as long as we kept our focus, then I believe we could you know, keep us definitely get enough points to be promoted, but more, more so enough points to win the league. Well, Gaffer, congratulations on promotion. That's all from me. I, I think I speak on behalf of all the supporters that it's been great to watch the team this season and we can't wait to carry on in League One, however that may look and whenever that may come. So thank you very much. No problem, Ben. Been a pleasure working with you this year. And yeah. we kick on next year, though.